Good morning. It's the Daily Quiz, Episode 50, ANSI Z10, Occupational Safety and Health Management System. I'm your host, John Newquist, and it's November 25th, 2025. This has been five questions kind of related to this on each of the tests. It's definitely going to be in the ASP and CSP, but safety and health management is in the CHST, SMP, and OSHT. Just take out the word ANSI Z10. So that's important. During a facility expansion, engineering proposes installing a new automated palletizer. The safety manager notes that no formal risk assessment or design review has been conducted. According to the ANSI Z10, what should occur before installation? A, conduct a job hazard analysis after equipment's operating for 30 days. B, rely on the manufacturer's safety manual since it meets CEUL requirements. C, install the equipment immediately and review safety concerns during commissioning. D, perform a documented design review and pre-installation risk assessment to identify hazards and required controls. So I call this, the manager notes something is wrong and it's no formal risk assessment and design review, so that's going to be the answer. That's all you have to remember with some of these questions. So we're going to do the design review and put the re pre-installation risk assessment and required controls. And of course the ANSI standard requires design review and risk assessment as part of the planning and operational controls. I identify the hazards, reduce the risk, and review the design. The chemical facility is organizing workflows and changing operator job duties. The supervisor wants to roll out the changes next week. The safety management warns, the safety manager warns that rushing out a rollout can miss safety impacts under ANSI Z10. What is the correct safety professional action? Approve the change because the workflow revisions are strictly an HR function. B, delay the changes until all employees complete refresher PSM training. C, conduct a management change analysis to evaluate risk impacts before implementing the change. D, implement the changes first and then conduct incident trend analysis. Again, what I call the missing uh, thing that was identified by safety was the impacts. So we're going to look for the word impacts and that's going to be C, conduct a management change analysis to evaluate risk impacts before implementing the change. Because ANSI requires change management or management of change for organizational, operational, and equipment changes. After several near misses at the packing line, operators express concern during a safety committee meeting. Management wants to add PPE as its immediate solution. According to ANSI Z10 hierarchy of controls and emphasis on prevention, what should the safety professional recommend first? A, provide upgraded PPE with a higher ANSI rating. B, increase signages and awareness and messaging. C, retrain the operators on safe work practices. D, evaluate and implement higher controls such as engineering or elimination before relying on PPE. And the answer is, evaluate and implement higher level controls such as engineering or elimination before relying on PPE because it prior, prior, prioritizes the hierarchy of controls and that's their risk reduction mythology. So that's the daily quiz for today. I am going to cover a little bit about the ANSI Z10 standard, just if you want some more in depth. What is it? It's a voluntary national standard. Uh, it's going to have international members in it. Uh, ISO will also be involved in it. And it focuses on risk reduction, worker involvement, and continuous improvement. It aligns with ISO 45000, that'll be tomorrow's um, daily quiz, and modern safety management principles. And it prevents, it, the goal is to make a systematic, proactive approach to recognizing control hazards built around Deming's plan, do, check, and act. In the context of the organization, it identifies any internal, external issues affecting safety performance. So that's going to require you to dig into what some of these issues are determine the worker needs and expectations, whether it be training, controls, or communication, and then what's the scope of the system? Is it going to cover all the workers? Is it going to cover just those that are in the facility? And then connect the strategic goals of the company with the safety objectives, as I call it. Needs of the organization have to be balanced with the needs of the worker, and it's a shared value. Hopefully we all share the same value and want the company to succeed. Leadership is uh, going to be the one responsible for the safety and health policy, and they've got to provide resources. And I always tell people that are new, ask your management, what is the budget for safety? And they tell you, you got to be like uh, 
you know, somebody's uncle where you got to ask him for money, that's not good. You should have a budget. You should be able to explain your budget and where you're going to spend your budget. So they want worker participation. I always want it because people who work there have experiences that I don't have, and they can see things that have happened before 5, 10, 12, 20 years ago, and they could happen again. So the management has to be active, and they want to do it. Sometimes you get stuck with a company, and they're not too active, and they just said, just make sure we, you know, got everything right, which is kind of like a hands-off approach, you know, which to them is maybe safety is not a value. Again, risk-based planning is they're going to identify all the hazards of risk assessment, prioritize the controls, setting measurable objectives, and allocating resources. Uh, measurable objectives may be called key performance indicators, as, uh, as uh, somebody always uh, gets uh, measured on. I uh, show a person putting up a sign with our helmet, ANSI helmet class 2, and our platform ladder. And now you can work both hands on this. No deaths in 10 years. So why we're using it? Well, we had an incident where somebody fell, broke a show, a lot of money. And, you know, that ladder's like 300 bucks. The helmet's $100. And we should protect it in the future. Part of this is to show people, let them pick the helmet and let them be comfortable with it. Because he's got, you know, it's cold out. He's got a lining that he's going to keep his head warm with. And once he found out, it was so comfortable. Remember, people's heads are not the same. So we're going to identify the hazard. Hazard's falling off a ladder. If we want to hurt our person, just give them a regular step ladder. Thousands of deaths. Don't use a regular step ladder. That's that's insane anymore. Prioritize the controls. How much can we control? We control this because it's cheap. You spend one hundred eighty thousand dollars on the injuries. I think you can spend four hundred dollars on prevention, right? I mean, it's it. You know, you may not want to spend four hundred dollars, but you can. And then what's our results? We're going to watch the people do it right. Every time we come by, they should be using it right, you know, which is what we want to do. And the support is you know, we give them resources. We gave the worker a training, and we talk about how to do it, hear their sides. Because, you know, this, the reason they didn't like the helmets was that some of them are so tight, it was choking them. And then you couldn't even put your, your winter lining on. So I says, oh, I got helmets that'll work. And, and they loved it. And it's cheap. It's not expensive. And then, of course, we want to have some document control. We want to keep track of all these training records. You know, keep it in there. PDF them. Put them in a spot we can find them. And then, of course, uh, part of the implementation of your safety and health program, you're going to set controls of things for lockout and confined space and how it works. And uh, you're going to manage the contractors so they don't burn your facility down or get hurt or drag you into a lawsuit. And... The hierarchy controls is all through the area. Of course, the hierarchy controls that um, Microsoft came up does is missing the warning, which would be between engineering controls and administrative. You can see PPE is not on there, but they've tried to fit it all in. Management change has been <laughs> every test. Lots of questions on ASP, CSP. And then emergency preparedness, what to do in an emergency. Because you, hopefully you don't ever have to use it, but you got to plan for it. And then evaluation, the Deming uh, check part, uh, we're going to do monitoring and measurements. That means we're going to, I'm a fan of doing monthly audits of every everybody in the facility. And you can pick a topic. Let's see if, how many operators are wearing seatbelts? Should be 100%, you know. In the last one, we did 50 uh, operators and only one didn't have a seatbelt. The minute he saw us coming up to talk to me, he's like, I just stepped off for a second, I forgot. Okay, fine. Shouldn't happen the rest of the year, I hope, you know. And then incident investigations, you know, we want to investigate losses. We want to investigate trips, slips, and falls, things that don't cost us money because they could cost us money. And I'm a fan of cameras everywhere. And then, of course, our corrective actions are documented. And what did we do? And we're always looking to improve. That's the, you know, the check, plan, do, act part of it now. Management's going to review. We keep track of all the successes. We can say how much are we saving them every year. And update our policies and procedures. We always look at for people. Everybody's going. As we get more safety people, which is what we want to do, we'll have a lot more better ideas, too. All right. Any questions? Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow.